In this video, we're going to talk about combined cycles. Until now, we've looked at the vapor power cycles and the gas power cycles. With the gas turbine power plants, we've looked at the Brayton cycle, where we've got a compressor in which atmospheric air is being continuously drawn in. It's compressed to a higher pressure, where it is then mixed with the fuel in the combustion chamber. And then and this, uh, combustion products over here are expanded through the turbine and then discharged to the surroundings after a net work output is obtained. So that was the Brayton cycle. And then we looked at the vapor power plants that operate on the basis of the Rankine cycle where we've got four uh, processes taking place. The process one to two is across the turbine where we've got the isentropic expansion that is taking place. Then process two, three is across the condenser where we've got heat rejection taking place at constant pressure. And then process three to four is across the pump, which is again isentropic and compression takes place across the pump. And then process four to one is across the boiler where heat addition takes place at a constant pressure. Now both of these cycles can be combined together and the reason for that is that um, when we look at these two cycles separately, uh, they operate at certain temperatures. So how do we need to combine these cycles? We need to look at that, which would be the topping cycle, which would be the bottoming cycle as well. We need to account for that. And usually because the gas turbine power plant operates at a higher temperature, because of that reason, it is usually the topping cycle, whereas because of the steam turbine plant that is operating on the basis of Rankine cycle, because of its operating temperatures being lower, uh, especially across the condenser, then these are usually the bottoming cycles. So if you look at this uh, figure over here, what we will observe is that the individual cycles when we look at the individual cycles how um, the temperature scales are for the Brayton cycle which is um, being considered right now in this video and the Rankine cycle and this will clearly show you which cycle has higher temperatures and lower temperatures of heat uh, content addition and rejection and then each of these uh, is given over here uh, according to their efficiency. So the maximum efficiency for the Brayton cycle, the maximum efficiency for the Rankine cycle, and then the C over here, the part C over here shows you the combined cycle where you've got the Brayton cycle and the Rankine cycle combined together. And what you will see is that the maximum efficiency for this combined cycle is going to be a lot higher than if you were looking at a single cycle um, power plant. So usually what you will see is the way to combine these two or the schematic for these two uh, combined together is going to look like this where you've got this heat exchanger in the middle that operates as a heat uh, recovery st steam generator uh, where the exhaust of the gas turbine is used to uh, heat up uh, the working fluid that leaves the pump from the Rankine cycle for the Rankine cycle. What that means is that this heat exchanger is acting as the boiler for the Rankine cycle that is being operated over here or the steam cycle that is being operated over here. So that is the only major difference. All other subcomponents uh, remain the same and they're just as is in the combined cycle. So uh, like I said, you've got a heat recovery steam generator, which is also termed as HRSG, which operates between these two cycles over here. And then you also have to account for the efficiency now uh, for this combined cycle. And the the combined cycle efficiency is going to be uh, the net work done across the gas cycle, which is represented by W dot gas, uh, 
added in to the net work done across the vapor cycle divided by the heat content that is being supplied now and now the heat content that is supplied is only across the combustion chamber over here and you don't need to supply any heat content into the boiler anymore because the turbine exhaust that leaves at 4 is already at a higher temperature so that turbine exhaust heats up the working fluid that leaves the pump over here for the vapor cycle so let's just look at this heat recovery steam generator and how we can analyze this heat exchanger obviously we've got uh, inlets here and outlets here and using those we can uh, basically apply the energy balance across this uh, heat exchanger because it is a heat exchanger so you've got uh, this state 4 and state 5 which is acting alongside the mass flow rate of uh, the working fluid of the gas cycle so then obviously you're gonna have to add in m dot into h4 minus uh, m dot into h5 which is leaving uh, the system so combine those two you're gonna have m dot g into h4 minus h5 and just like that on the other side you're going to have m dot into uh, h6 minus m dot into h7 um, and then you're going to flip the signs because you're moving it to the other side of the equation if it was on this side of the equation then it would have been as i just said m dot into h6 minus m dot into h7 and m dot here is uh, the working fluid across the vapor cycle so that is being represented by m dot v and that would have been equal to zero and then we move this term on to the other side um, and then we have this equation of this form so what this indicates is that we need to find out the enthalpies at all of the states in order for us to find the mass flow rates whether it's the mass flow rates or whether it's um, the work done and that means that when we're talking about Brayton cycle we cannot apply the cold air standard analysis here now because with the cold air standard analysis we just look at the temperatures and find out the values in terms of temperature so we can only look at the air standard analysis because we want to find out the enthalpies at all of the states so let's just look at a problem now and how we can solve this problem for a combined cycle. And we've got this statement that is given to us for a combined gas turbine vapor power plant. We've got the net uh, power output given to us as well. So first of all, we're going to draw the schematic. We're going to label all the information that is given to us if that information is not already provided. So first of all, whatever the situation is, what we need to do is that we need to find out enthalpies at all of the states at state 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth so then we have to be careful which tables we are using as well because obviously for the gas turbine we would be using table A22 uh, whereas for the vapor cycle we would have to use the uh, water uh, data tables or the steam data tables so using those we can find out the enthalpies and then because we are being asked to determine the mass flow rates of the air and the steam, then we have to basically apply the mass and energy rate balances across this heat recovery steam generator. And so I'm not going to go into the details of how to find out the enthalpies at each state, but I expect that you could do that yourself. And then you apply this um, mass balance mass and energy balance across this heat recovery steam generator and from that you'll get a ratio of the mass flow rates so m dot v by m dot g you're going to get a certain ratio here and now you can go ahead and write down the expression for the net power developed across the gas turbine so that would be w dot g which is going to be equal to m dot g into 
your work done across the turbine here between states three and four. So this is going to be uh, multiplied overall with H3 minus H4. And then minus the work that is being consumed by the compressor across state one and state two. So that's going to be minus H2 minus H1 in the brackets. And this is going to be your work done across the gas turbine. And just like that, you're going to be able to write the expression for the work done across the vapor cycle, which is going to be equal to m dot of the working fluid across the vapor cycle multiplied by um, the work done across the turbine, which is going to be H7 minus H8. So we've got H7 minus H8 here. And you subtract out of this the pump work, that is um, the energy that is supplied to the pump, which is across state 6 and state 9. So this is going to be minus H6 minus H9. And combining these two with uh, the ratio that we had just fi found out in terms of mass flow rates of the working, f the vapor working fluid and the gas working fluid, which was equal to 0 0.1547. So we can combine these three equations and another equation, which would be uh, the net work done. And the net work done is equal to the work done across the gas cycle plus the work done across the vapor cycle. So we can simplify that by writing this equation and substituting the values of the work done across the gas cycle, which is over here, and the work done across the vapor cycle, which is over here. And we substitute that, and instead of m dot v here, in this equation, we take out the common factor m dot g, and that would mean that with this expression now, we would have to divide it with m dot g uh, in order for this equation to be consistent and then from here we could go ahead and find this equation out for m dot g because w dot net is already given to us as 45 megawatts so we have to be uh, what we have to be careful with is the units that are used here as well because um, this is megawatts, so we need to convert it into kilojoules per second for the units to stay consistent as well. So then from here, we could find out the value for m dot g, and we can plug that in over here to find out the value for m dot v. And both of these we would get in kilograms per second if we've used consistent units. And other than this, then we can go ahead and plug in the values of enthalpies and m dot g to find out the work done across the gas turbine. And we can plug in the values here to find out the work done across the vapor power cycle, which is also being asked here. So essentially, we found out everything except for the thermal efficiency. So then we can go ahead and use the expression for, of the thermal efficiency for the combined power plant and find out the value for thermal efficiency as well. But before we do that, we need to obviously find out the value for Q dot N, which we find, find out using this equation. And after we've done that, we can just plug this in here for the expression of thermal efficiency, which is going to be equal to the net power output across the combined power plant divided by Q dot N. So this is how we analyze a combined um, gas vapor power plant. And then obviously um, there's certain considerations that we need to account for 
before we can go ahead and use the combined power plant or prefer the combined power plant instead of one of um, the gas power plants or the vapor power plants. And those considerations are economic considerations because we need to do our cost analysis. Those considerations are also the supply and demand of electricity or power that is needed. And then um, maybe there could be restrictions uh, of location as well that could come in where, for example, it's harder to, um, let's say, move certain subcomponents off the gas power plant uh, because that is usually movable. So these are the restrictions or considerations that a power plant engineer needs to account for before they can go ahead and decide which power plant they would prefer.